Good evening, and welcome once again to a very special edition of the Shadow Gallery. I am your host, James Donnelly. And for those of you who caught my source code review, what I teased at the end, you will now find out. Who is my favorite comic book character of all time? Comic book hero, I should say, of all time. The reason that I'm wearing this hat right now is an indicator of who that is. Because really only one hero in the entire pantheon of comicdom has worn a black slouch hat. It's not a cowboy hat. I call this a slouch hat. Now, on July 31st, 1930, on the Street and Smith's Detective Story Hour, a radio broadcast in which they did various detective stories, either from magazines, what have you. Well, you first heard a voice creepy and frightening voice with a mirthless laugh. And it asked the question, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. And there you have it. That began who I consider to be the greatest pulp character of all time, and later would be my favorite comic hero of all time. Now, the Shadow himself had no radio show at that point in time. But his introduction, he was basically the, uh, the host, if you will, of the Street and Smith Detective Story Radio Hour. And he became so popular just from those, just from hosting that show, that a man named Walter Gibson, who was a magician turned journalist, was asked to write a series of shadow stories. Now, Walter Gibson was a pretty prolific and pretty damned smart novelist. And this is an obvious reprint of one of his original novels. Basically this, uh, this particular, uh, particular one has two of his novels. Uh, they're not very, they're not, inc they're not incredibly long, but they were, you know, they were really excellent pulp fiction. Uh, Basically, most, a lot of the characters that followed of the pulp era, of comic books, at least in comic books anyway, were derived from many of the characters that appeared in Pulp Fiction. And I, I'm not talking about the movie, I'm talking about the actual Pulp Fiction era. So, characters like Doc Savage, The Bat, and The Shadow very specifically was the progenitor of the character of Batman. When Bob Kane created him in 1937, uh, his idea was that he essentially was kind of the shadow, because the shadow, once the... Now, the shadow itself... and backtrack a little bit. Uh, the shadow himself, after the popularity of these novels... Now, Walter Gibson would pound out approximately 10,000 to 15,000 words a day and released hundreds of shadow novels and shadow magazine articles once the pot, you know, and it continued its popularity for many years. Now in 1936, the shadow made his first radio broadcast as his own character. Now, when Walter Gibson essentially 
not, he didn't create the character of the shadow, but essentially he took the idea and he completely elaborated on it. Basically, the shadow, to most people, was a man named Lamont Cranston. Lamont Cranston was a very wealthy playboy uh, who basically, you know, was a, not a ne'er-do-well, but just, you know, seemed very uninterested in, you know, things that outside of his own selfish requirements. And then at night, he was a black cloaked, slouch hat wearing, twin 45 caliber toting force of justice and vengeance. He showed very little mercy to those who would do evil. Now, in reality, the persona of Lamont Cranston was being portrayed by a man named Kent Allard. Kent Allard was a World War I pilot who later became a spy and later became eh, not necessarily a gun for hire, but became a sort of mercenary. And then in the late 20s, um, basically he met Lamont Cranston in, uh, in Shanghai and basically adopted the persona of Lamont Cranston and went back to New York City and thus became the shadow. Now, that might differ from some of the origins that you've heard, but again, we're going step by step here. Now, in 1936, the actual radio show began. Now, that was not written by, but it featured uh, one of the great artists of the 20th century, Orson Welles. Um, he was the first person to voice the shadow. Uh, he did it for only a very short period of time, but that, you know, essentially helped catapult him to the fame that he would so richly deserve for many, many years. And would of course lead to, you know, the, him, director, him directing the Mercury Theater and the Mercury Theater on the air, and then of course the, uh, the Howard Koch and Orson Welles uh, created a 1938 broadcast of War of the Worlds, which I consider to be one of the great pieces of uh, you know, broadcast art that has ever been. If you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend it. I've listened to it many, many, many times. Um, and I've listened to many episodes of The Shadow. Now, The Shadow radio show lasted throughout the 50s. Um, and then just, you know, obviously with the advent of TV, things just fell into obscurity. And the novel stopped too, sadly. But in our next episode, which will be coming very shortly, you will see how he was recreated through the art of the comic book. So, and also we'll talk about the radio show as well, and how that leads into the, the comics and where they differ, and also uh, to, the, to the film that came out in 1994 starring Alec Baldwin. So we'll pause and we'll come right back with part two of The Shadow.